Here's a fact that might shock you. The production of one solar panel can generate up to 300 times more toxic waste than a nuclear power plant. Yet, we're told solar is the clean energy of the future. Something doesn't add up, and I'm about to show you why. Picture this. Endless rows of gleaming solar panels stretching as far as the eye can see, basking under a bright sun. It's a sight that fills many with hope for a cleaner, greener future. I was once one of those people, an environmental journalist excited about covering the rapid growth of solar energy. Back then, I believed the hype. Solar was renewable, produced no emissions during use, and costs were dropping fast. It seemed like the perfect solution to our energy problems. But as I dug deeper into the world of solar, I started to notice cracks in this shiny facade. Make no mistake, what I found shocked me, and it might just change the way you think about clean energy forever, because sometimes the truth isn't as bright as we'd like it to be. As I dug into the solar industry's secrets, a disturbing question kept nagging at me. How can something marketed as environmentally friendly produce so much toxic waste? The answer challenged everything I thought I knew about renewable energy. It started with a chance encounter. Late one night, bleary-eyed from hours of research, I stumbled upon an obscure environmental report. At first, I thought I must be misreading the figures, but as I blinked and refocused, the shocking reality sank in. The solar panel manufacturing process was generating astronomical amounts of toxic waste. I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd uncovered something big something that didn't align with this squeaky clean image of solar energy I'd bought into for years. So I did what any curious journalist would do, I started digging deeper. What I found was a web of uncomfortable truths that the solar industry seemed desperate to keep in the shadows. For starters, the production of solar panels is incredibly energy intensive. We're talking about factories running 24-7, powered largely by, you guessed it, fossil fuels. But it gets worse. The manufacturing process requires a cocktail of hazardous chemicals. Hydrofluoric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphine gas. Not exactly the ingredients you'd expect in a green product, right? And when these chemicals are improperly handled or disposed of, the environmental impact can be devastating. I spoke with Dr. Kara Libby, a senior technical executive at the Electric Power Research Institute. She confirmed my growing suspicions. The toxicity of solar panels is a real issue. Many of the materials used in their production are harmful to human health and the environment if not managed properly. As I delved deeper into the rabbit hole, I came across the concept of embedded carbon. It's a fancy term for a simple idea, the carbon footprint of a product before it even starts being used. And let me tell you, the embedded carbon in solar panels is no joke. Think about it. The silicon has to be mined, processed, and purified at extremely high temperatures. The glass, aluminum, and other components all require energy-intensive production processes. Then there's the transportation of materials and finished panels around the globe. All of this adds up to a sobering reality. A solar panel isn't carbon neutral from day one. In fact, depending on where and how it's made, it can take years for a panel to offset the carbon debt it was born with. I remember sitting back in my chair, feeling a mix of disbelief and frustration. How could this be the clean energy solution we've all been sold on? It felt like a cruel joke, trading one form of pollution for another. But here's the kicker. Despite all this, solar energy still has the potential to be cleaner than fossil fuels in the long run. It's just that the road to get there is a lot bumpier and more complicated than most people realize. While solar panels have their issues, they're only half the story. What about the unsung heroes of renewable energies? The batteries that store it all? Turns out, their environmental impacts might be even more shocking. I remember the moment it hit me. I was standing in a vast lithium mine in Chile, surrounded by a landscape that looked more like Mars than Earth. The realization struck me like a bolt of lightning. Batteries, the supposed saviors of clean energy, were hiding their own dirty secrets. You see, for solar energy to be truly viable, we need a way to store it. The sun doesn't shine 24-7, but our power needs are constant. That's where batteries come in. They're the unsung heroes of the renewable energy revolution. 
quietly storing power for when we need it most. But here's the kicker, these batteries come with their own hefty environmental price tag. It all starts with the raw materials. Lithium, cobalt, nickel, these aren't just fancy names on the periodic table, they're elements that need to be extracted from the earth, often at great cost to local ecosystems and communities. Take lithium, for example, the white gold of the battery world. I spoke with Maria, a local activist in Chile's Atacama Desert, where much of the world's lithium is mined. Her words still haunt me. They tell us this is for the good of the planet, but our water is disappearing. Our flamingos are dying. Is this really progress? And it's not just lithium. Cobalt mining in the Democratic Republic of Congo has been linked to human rights abuses and child labor. Nickel extraction in Indonesia is causing deforestation and water pollution. It's a far cry from the clean, green image we associate with renewable energy. But the environmental impact doesn't stop at the mining stage. The production of batteries is an energy-intensive process that often relies on, you guessed it, fossil fuels. The cruel irony wasn't lost on me. We're burning coal to make batteries that are supposed to help us move away from coal. And then there's the lifespan issue. Batteries don't last forever. After about 10 years, most electric vehicle batteries need to be replaced. Solar storage batteries might last a bit longer, but they too have a limited lifespan. So what happens to all these dead batteries? Recycling seems like the obvious answer, but as I dug deeper, I found that battery recycling is a complex and often unprofitable process. Many batteries end up in landfills where their toxic components can leach into the soil and water supply. I spoke with Dr. Linda Zhang, an expert in battery technology at MIT. She didn't mince words. The current state of battery recycling is woefully inadequate. We're creating a waste problem that future generations will have to deal with. It felt like I was caught in a vicious cycle. Solar panels need batteries to be effective. Batteries need raw materials that damage the environment. And at the end of their life, these batteries become hazardous waste. Was this really the clean energy solution we'd been promised? Don't get me wrong, I still believe that renewable energy is crucial for our future, but the more I learned about batteries, the more I realized that we can't just blindly accept them as a perfect solution. We need to be honest about their impact and work towards making the entire process, from mining to manufacturing to recycling, more sustainable. As I dug deeper into the world of solar energy and batteries, a disturbing question kept nagging at me. If these issues are so significant, why aren't more people talking about them? The resistance I encountered when trying to share my findings left me feeling like I'd stumbled upon a conspiracy of silence. I'll never forget the day I tried to pitch my story to a journalist. I walked into her office, brimming with excitement about the groundbreaking information I'd uncovered, but as I laid out the facts about toxic waste, carbon debt, and environmental destruction, her expression changed from interest to concern. Look, she said, leaning back in her chair, this is great investigative work, but we can't run it. It's too controversial. I was stunned. But it's the truth, I protested. Don't people have a right to know? She sighed. Sometimes the truth is complicated. We have advertisers to consider, partnerships with green energy companies. Running this could jeopardize all of that. It was a wake-up call. I realized that the story I wanted to tell conflicted with powerful corporate interests and a narrative that had been carefully crafted over years. The renewable energy industry wasn't just selling solar panels and batteries, they were selling hope, a solution to climate change that seemed too good to be true. And maybe that's why so many people, even diehard environmentalists, struggle to accept the darker side of green energy. I spoke with Dr. Sarah Thompson, a psychologist specializing in environmental attitudes. There's a strong cognitive dissonance at play here, she explained. People have invested so much emotionally in the idea of clean energy that confronting its flaws feels like a personal betrayal. It's easier to ignore or dismiss the information. I saw this firsthand when I shared my findings with friends in environmental groups. Many reacted with disbelief, anger, or outright denial. You're just giving ammunition to climate change deniers, one accused me. It was a harsh reminder that even in the pursuit of a cleaner planet, 
tribalism, and ideology can blind us to uncomfortable truths. But the numbers don't lie. As I dug into the projections for the solar industry's growth, the scale of the potential problem became clear. By 2050, we're looking at a 450% increase in global solar capacity. That's great news for reducing carbon emissions, right? But it also means a proportional increase in toxic waste from manufacturing, more destructive mining operations, and a looming e-waste crisis as panels reach the end of their lifespan. It was a sobering realization. The solar industry, like any other, is ultimately driven by profit, and sometimes those profit motives conflict with the very environmental goals they claim to support. Companies push for rapid adoption and expansion, often at the expense of developing more sustainable production methods or investing in recycling infrastructure. I couldn't help but draw parallels to other industries I'd investigated in the past. The tobacco companies that suppressed health risks, the oil companies that downplayed climate change. Was the solar industry falling into the same trap of prioritizing growth over responsibility? Don't get me wrong. I still believe that renewable energy is crucial for our future, but my investigation has convinced me that we need to approach it with eyes wide open. We can't afford to be so dazzled by the promise of clean energy that we ignore the very real environmental costs of producing it. As I reflect on my journey into the world of solar energy and batteries, I'm struck by how much my perspective has changed. What started as a simple investigation into clean energy? uncovered a complex web of environmental challenges and hidden costs. But let's be clear, this isn't about abandoning solar. It's about approaching it with open eyes and a critical mind. We need to demand more transparency from the renewable energy sector and push for continued innovation to truly make these technologies clean. The lesson here goes beyond solar panels and batteries. It's a reminder to question our assumptions about all green technologies, to dig deeper to look past the shiny marketing and feel-good slogans, because sometimes the truth isn't as bright as we'd like it to be. But facing that truth is the first step towards real solutions.